Hello, and welcome to Naval Horizons. I'm Samina Mondal, a public affairs intern with the US Naval Research Laboratory, part of the Naval Research Enterprise. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined by Lieutenant Commander Micah J. Kinney of the Medical Service Corps for the United States Navy, who serves as an aerospace research optometrist. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So to start off our conversation, you have done so much in terms of your career, whether it be for the Department of Defense and Department of Navy. Could you talk a little bit more about how you got your start? Absolutely. Uh, so as a kid, I was always uh, intrigued by the military, uh, especially going to air shows as a, as a kid, watching airplanes fly in the sky. Uh, so that was something that I was always interested in uh, growing up. When I decided to uh, pursue a profession, uh, I, I settled on optometry, uh, working as an undergrad uh, uh, in an optometry office and seeing you know, the effect you can have on, on patients' lives um, really you know, seemed like, a, like an exciting field to get into. Um, so when I was in optometry school, I learned about the Health Profession Scholarship Program, which would allow me to combine my excitement and passion for optometry and patient care uh, with serving in the military. Uh, and, and uh, earned a scholarship uh, on top of that as well. It's incredible. So you've kind of found your way to have an extensive career in both confining STEM and optometry, which is very unique. So could you walk us through a little bit more about the program that you mentioned, the U.S. Health Profession Scholarship Program, as well as your professional background or basically your academic history that you've had? Absolutely. Uh, so I, I studied biology at East Carolina University. Uh, with the intent of going into some type of medical profession. And, and like I mentioned, uh, settling on optometry as, as an exciting field. Uh, you know, to get a plug in for optometry, it's, it's an exciting uh, opportunity to interact with patients and you can see an immediate effect you know, when folks put on glasses for the first time, as I'm sure many folks that may be watching this video can have experienced in their own lives uh, and see individual leaves on trees or uh, you know, what the road signs look like and, and things like that. So you, you get that immediate feedback and, and seeing where you're helping, uh, helping change somebody's life. Um, so after, after undergrad, uh, I got accepted to optometry school at the University of Alabama in Birmingham. Uh, and uh, the, the military recruiter came through and, and pitched the Health Profession Scholarship Program, which is, at least for me, was not something that I had known about. Uh, it allows folks to, who are wanting to pursue degrees in medicine, uh, dentistry, optometry, um, and other professions like that uh, to earn a scholarship and then have, have employment uh, through the military after school. Um, so all the branches of service offer that. Uh, I settled upon the Navy because I like to be by the water, um, and, and that was uh, you know, kind of my journey. That's amazing. So how did you see yourself using STEM in your day-to-day -day job, whether that be as a college student or as an optometrist? Absolutely. So uh, in order to go to graduate school, we had to have very heavy scientific uh, studies uh, in chemistry, physics, mathematics, and things like that. Um, I really found a, a passion for mathematics and chemistry. Uh, so when I got into my graduate program, uh, you know, understanding the biochemistry of, of how the eye works, um, how the visual system processes things uh, was really intriguing. Um, and and as on a clinical basis, understanding uh, things like, like the pathologies or how diseases work um, and getting into that, that underlying, you know, if this happens, then this is gonna be the, the downstream effect. Um, things like, like diabetes, um, high blood pressure, uh, those things have long-term effects that affect not only your eyes, but other parts of your body as well. Um, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics all plays a, a big role um, in, in uh, providing healthcare, um, understanding the, the causes of, of why some folks uh, may suffer from certain diseases and then how to solve those problems. Um, but on, on the other side too, um, how can we use technology to improve quality of life um, and also improve performance of individuals, uh, whether that's somebody that needs to fly an airplane, drive a ship, or uh, navigate a submarine. Uh, they use their visual system to, to do that. And can we improve their processes and their performance in some way? That's uh, been kind of you know what, what I like to do and, and try to solve those problems. Yeah, it's wonderful to see how it all kind of came together in one, all of your Absolutely. passions in one. So how does your work directly impact the Department of the Navy? Because you have so many titles and specifically related to what you do today. What is its naval relevance? Great question. So I work for the Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division in Patuxent River, Maryland, 
Uh, it's a command, a part of the Naval Air Systems Command, or NAVAIR. Uh, and, and right now, my job is to uh, provide uh, my knowledge of the visual system uh, and, and vision standards to uh, the engineers, uh, the civilian, and the other military members, uh, a part of NOC AD, uh, to, to try to solve those science and technology challenges and, and problems and try to push uh, technology development to, to try to enhance performance. Um, the, the Navy saw the need to include aeromedical professionals like myself uh, in, as part of that, that engineering process. Uh, so when we're trying to find new ways to solve problems, that we're thinking about the individual as a whole uh, and not just a, a single problem to solve, but an entire system. And part of that system involves the human. There's going to be a human operator uh, inside of a, a, a cockpit, uh, inside of a workstation, even though the system may be unmanned or autonomous in some way, there's still a, a human in the loop that's got to be involved in that process. It's incredible. So that term aeromedical is something I'm sure many people have not heard. So thank you for sharing. You've had quite the career, quite the experience to date. So could you share possibly one of your favorite memories on the job or maybe an incredible project that you were able to take on? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, if, if I could go back to Aeromedical and explain that, because um, I, I think you're right. I think a lot of folks may, may not have heard that term before. Uh, so within, within the Navy, uh, we have several professions that uh, go through flight training, uh, the same as our, our pilots and air crew. Uh, we go through the same water survival training. Uh, we learn how to fly a fixed wing and rotary wing aircraft um, so that we can apply our knowledge of, of uh, the human system, whether that's uh, the visual system, uh, whether it's medicine, um, psychology, uh, physiology, um, and even physician assistants, uh, so that we can uh, take that into that arena uh, and, and understand the language that the that pilots and the air crew are speaking, um, and then apply our, our knowledge base uh, to that. So with that, one of the, the exciting things that I was able to take part of uh, was testing an, a new eye protective uh, piece of equipment for the Coast Guard. Um, so the Coast Guard's a, a smaller branch, and so they lean uh, on the Navy for, for uh, some scientific support and things like that. Uh, so when this, uh, when this problem arose that they needed help with, uh, I was able to partake or participate as, as part of a team uh, to address that. And uh, yeah, I feel very fortunate to have flown on all six aircraft platforms uh, uh, for the Coast Guard and was able to see firsthand their, uh, their, their missions uh, flying low level over the water at night. You really appreciate how little there is to see uh, and it can be very disorienting uh, at times. Um, but I'd have to say the most exciting thing that I've been able to do is, is being able to fly with our, our men and women uh, in, in all different types of aircraft, uh, whether, it's, whether it's airplanes or helicopters, um, and just see that exciting work environment. Awesome. So thinking about those cutting edge topics and almost the field of aeromedicine that you're working in, how do you see your work contributing to solving naval challenges? Absolutely. Um, I, I think that as we continue to push the boundaries of technology, um, and try to get the most out of human performance. Uh, you know, some of the, the limiting factors are our, our natural human physiology. Uh, you know, we can only po pull so much G-forces in an aircraft before we pass out. Um, so trying to, uh, trying to solve those problems and, and allow folks to, to reach their peak performance. Um, things like helmet-mounted displays, night vision goggle systems, eye protective systems, uh, all those, all those uh, areas, we will continue to see improvements in the future. Um, and so the question is, is if we design a piece of technology, um, are we thinking about the whole picture? Are we thinking about the human? Um, is, is the lighting going to be sufficient? Is the color scheme sufficient? Um, what if we uh, have certain um, technology that's, that's limited in some way? Th those are some ad additional ideas that aeromedical professionals can bring. Uh, to the engineering teams, to the civilian teams, and to these technology teams uh, to, to bring that additional aspect. So looking forward in your field as it continues to advance and grow, how do you see science and technology transforming the future in terms of whether it be like aeromedicine or even the applications that you've had as an optometrist and how you think your career will continue to blossom in the future? I, I, think, I think the sky's the limit. I really do. I think that we're going to continue to see uh, 
technologies improve uh, to where we can uh, we can do more things. Um, I mean, we see that in the in the automobile industry uh, with with autonomous vehicles um, and and having the human trust that that autonomy. Uh, you know, there's still answers to questions in, in that area. Um, I think in terms of the the visual system, uh, not only in in helping us uh, see where we have trouble seeing, um, but I think the applications back to the civilian sector can be in um, in things like like entertainment, uh, vir virtual reality. Um, I think in, uh, in, in in clinical care and education. Um, you know, it, it, you can imagine sitting in a in a in a graduate level class and and looking at powerpoints and slides uh, versus being in a virtual environment where you can see it three dimensionally. Uh, you know, on a, I think those are those are opportunities that we can utilize the technology that the military is developing uh, in, a, in a very you know civilianized way, mm -hmm. um, and we've seen that throughout history. You know, things like cell phones, GPS, and other things that we've been able to leverage because of the work that that our military and, and government is doing. As you know, so many students around the country want to become medical professionals, but maybe don't know how to get their foot in the door when it comes to the Department of Defense or Department of Navy. So if you had to go back to your high school or college self, what piece of advice for your career would you give? And maybe something could be in the realm of what you wish you would have heard or something that you now think of and look back on. I, I think looking back, it's, it's been remarkable to see how many different types of profession and job types there are within the military. Um, perhaps there's the you know, a stigma that if I'm if I join the military, you know, I'll, I'll be doing this job or that job. But there's there's a limitless number of possibilities uh, from, you know, whether it's the the medicine side, uh, whether it's you know technology development, um, you know, photojournalism, uh, computer programming. You know, there's there's so many different possibilities. So I would definitely encourage myself uh, as a younger uh, individual or those that are, you know, at, at that stage in their life, um, to not limit yourself in thinking that uh, that that maybe the military may not have uh, a job for you. Uh, there certainly is a lot of opportunity, and uh, like I said, I think um, anybody that's interested in that should, should certainly give that a, a second thought. So as a leader and innovator within your field. What do you feel makes you most enthusiastic about going to work each day for the Department of the Navy? I definitely feel like I'm a part of something that's that's larger than than myself. Um, I feel like the the work that we're a part of is going to uh, it absolutely it will save lives, um, but it's also a part of a, a greater whole of, of 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 unity that I think our, our nation really needs, uh, and and that you know. The person on my left and on my right, you know, we're, we're citizens of the same country um, and the work that we do helps to protect and preserve our way of life uh, and perhaps share that way of life with other people around the world. Um, so I, I get a, lo a lot of satisfaction in knowing that I'm a part of, a part of that, that, big, um, that big system to, to help provide freedom and defend freedom. Uh, you know, I may not be on the front lines, I, I'm, I may just be, you know, an optometrist and but but if I can make sure that folks can see as best as they can uh, when they're when they're flying an airplane, they can see the the boat that they need to land on as as best as possible. Um, or perhaps when they're in an environment where they they can't see uh, that we can solve those problems. Um, and then, like I said, we see something fielded and and potentially save a life. Well, thank you so much, Lieutenant Commander Kinney, for such an interesting conversation, and thank you for your contributions to the greater picture when it comes to the Navy and using aeromedicine to do so. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I, I think uh, the outreach programs that ONR is doing um, is very vital. And I had wish that I had known these things uh, as, a, as a young, uh, young adult or, or young student. Um, and I, I really appreciate it. And thank you all at home for tuning in today. Be sure to watch our future and past episodes on the Naval Horizons website. And until next time, I'm Samina Mondal.